So I just want to talk about something because this has been a topic that I've been interested in for a bit now because it seems to be getting a lot of steam for some reason in just a bunch of media, films, TV shows. I know it's been in the comics for ages, but Evil Superman seems to be really big right now, especially because I mean it's always been big in the comics and even the cartoons. You know, Superman's been mind controlled, you know, all these things. And then in 2013, we've got Injustice, where that became even more of a popular thing. Ah. Oh, what if Superman turned evil? Even though, I mean, if any superhero was going to turn evil, it's more likely to be Batman. I mean, the dude's got a lot of issues. I mean, more issues than Superman. And also, even in the main DCEU, which is the DC Extended Universe, Superman is betrayed as kind of a dick. Like, if you remember how Man of Steel ends, you know, after all that carnage that Superman assisted in, they have this entire thing where Superman destroys a US satellite, right, that's trying to track him down because obviously after an event like the Metropolis incident, the government is going to be like, right, this is an alien, we do not know if we can control him, we need to make sure that we keep tabs on him, you know, all that kind of stuff. And basically Superman's like, you need to stop following me right now because I can do whatever I want. So if I want to help you, I can decide if I want to help you. Basically, that's how that conversation goes down. And that just does not sound like Superman. Like, they really missed the nail on the coffin in portraying, you know, a Superman character that's, you know, accurate to the comics. And that's a cliche thing to say. But seriously, this Superman is nothing like any Superman that we know of. And this is like... Here, I'll show you some dialogue that he says in Batman v Superman, which also sounds nothing like anything Superman would say. Stay down! If I wanted it, you'd be dead already. I'll take you in without breaking you, which is more than you deserve. Then he picks up a bus filled with children and just starts going <laughs> like this. <laughs> you leave those children alone, Zod! <laughs> oh wait, that's Superman. Do you leave those children alone, Superman? <laughs> Superman's about to hurl the bus at Zod. <laughs> Superman, the bus is filled with children. Oh, fuck. Zack Snyder really has a hard on for being like, well, if these heroes existed in real life, they would be total dicks. Get fucking real. And I mean, Jesus Christ, you shouldn't do that in a mainline Superman film because that's just ridiculous, right? You know, once you've like lost your virginity yeah. to this fucking movie, and then you come and say to me something about like, oh, my superhero wouldn't do that. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> like, like, I'm like, wake the fuck up. It's like, yes, it's like, yes. And that's why I like about like movies like Brightburn and The Boys are doing, which is a show on Amazon Prime where. They're taking a character that's very much like Superman, but not Superman. It's a very clever thing to do because you have a lot of free reign with what you can do with these characters. But yeah, I just wanted to compare these two different interpretations of the evil Superman thing and see which one does it better. So this is not going to be like a review of the boys. I guess I will be technically reviewing aspects of Brightburn since the character is very integral to the movie, so any critique I'm doing on that character is obviously going to be a big part of the movie, but I'm not reviewing the movie, so that's just a clarification. Yeah, and also a spoiler warning for The Boys, because I highly recommend you check out The Boys on Amazon Prime. Just watch this show, alright? It's a really good show. It's eight episodes, an easy binge watch. It's also based on a comic book of the same name, which came out in 2006, written by Garth Enos, who wrote the Preacher comic book. But yeah, now with all that out of the way, let's start talking about Homelander from The Boys. Now, he's very much a Superman-like character. He's portrayed by Anthony Starr, who is, I believe, a New Zealand actor. And he acts his ass off with this character. He is pretty fantastic. Because there are scenes where he's just acting like a complete psychopath, but he's completely believable. He actually feels like a real person. You know, instead of someone like, you know, an actor like hamming it up, being like, ha 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 ha. You know, that kind of acting. Now, he feels really believable, and that's what really grounds these so-called heroes in this universe into feeling more, you know, grounded, more realistic, like they actually exist, which is the whole point of the show. And that's what The Boys does really well. And Homelander especially, he's very threatening. He has this just great presence about him, because he's got this charm, right? He's got his smiles like, ah, oh, 
the classic American boy, and that's all a facade, though, because you can see it's like underneath him there is just all this, you know, just narcissism, egotistical, just psychoticness about him, which is really cool to portray through a performance, and that was, you know, conveyed excellently. And on top of that, he's very clever in the show. There's a scene in the airplane scene where Wonder Woman copy, who is a Queen Maeve, and Homelander, who's of course the Superman copy here, they try to save an airplane, things go wrong, and they're pretty much like, okay, we, we can't save all these people because the plane's going down. The thing is, they could save a few people, but they decide it's going to look bad, you know, in a PR perspective, which is so terrifying because, you know, that's a mindset that a lot of people have in that kind of like high positions like that adds a level of realism to his character which makes him more threatening and more terrifying for me personally because it's like they could have saved a few people on that airplane but they decide not because they just look bad if you know they couldn't save the whole thing so you know once the airplane goes down he also manages to salvage it in this other kind of like PR stunt so that they can get into the army and it really shows how clever he is and how he has no emotions towards any of these people because it's like Bro, I'm like a god to them and honestly if we had powers like this if we were jacked up on this compound V which is like the drug in this universe super drug then people would probably think like this because there's many people in real life that actually do think like that you know in high celebrity status you know big corporations which again adds a lot of you know realism to this thing but the thing is Homeland is not a complete you know psychopath because there are moments where later on in the show he, he's completely like detestable in the beginning right but then towards you know as we get into the end of this first season we see moments where we feel a bit of sympathy towards him one where you know he's hearing a story about his you know baby supposedly dying and you know we can tell that there's some sadness in his voice when he's like what about the baby you know that's really well done again great performance in that scene and also when we find out about his origin story when, you know, it's all pretty much a lie. You know, the whole being raised up in like, kind of like Kansas thing. And it makes you think if these people were like, you know, raised up differently, if they weren't just like, you know, lab babies, you know, raised up in this completely sterile environment, maybe they'd turn out better than these people who just have no human empathy whatsoever. So again, it makes you think, man, what if? So that's what I really love about Homelander. Now, to get on to Brightburn. Brightburn, oh my god, Brightburn. So this film, I'll just mention the film briefly because I said I really like The Boys and I recommend that, so brief thoughts on the film. It's not good. I really didn't like Brightburn. It was just a bad take on the Superman, you know, character taking the most surface level interpretation of, oh, what if Superman was evil, but they don't do anything interesting with that. Movies like Chronicle, you know, take an interesting look about how if you had powers, that can really change your life trajectory into just doing all this messed up stuff. But with Brightburn, we don't understand anything about this character. It's all very vague and confusing because there's this big time skip to like 10 years later and we see him and it's implied he was good before. You know, this kid, I can't remember his name. Oh my god, uh, Brandon Roof? See, I should have I should have brought notes to this video. Jesus, Brand Brandon. His name's Brandon Breyer. But anyway, yeah, forget about that because this Superman-like copy stinks. Because we don't understand his motivations, we don't understand what he's like as a person too much. Because we see, you know, one day he's sleeping, this alien signal thing comes up. He's basically like, take the world, take the world, and then he's psychotic. So we're like wondering, has he always been like this? because he's raised up with humans, he has a normal, like, childhood. But then, later on in the movie, he's like, I just don't care about humans, fuck him. So I'm, I'm just wondering, has he always been like this? Has he ever, like, cried before? Like, I'm super confused. And also, let me just tell you, this is some terrible writing for me personally, because there's this scene where Brandon is being picked on, right, by these one or two bullies. This mainly just this one bully, right? And he's like, ha, oh, you're a fucking nerd. And then he like trips him up, you know, pushes him. You know, just basically being a dick. You know, that guy's just a dick. And then there's this one girl being like, oh, don't listen to him, you're smart. Because they're picking on how he knows so much about like bugs and worms. He's like, oh, are you a bug? Are you a worm or something? So then this girl's like, oh, don't be, you know, don't be bothered by that. You're smart. You know, people need like smart people like you. You're going to change the world. Something like that. I'm more paraphrasing from the movie. And then once he, you know, like, gets his powers activated or something, he just starts, you know, the first person I believe he injures is her. She's the first real person that he actually kind of attacks. 
and I'm just like, what the fuck? What about the bullies? And the bullies never get injured by this kid. What? What kind of setup is that? So why would you even write in bullies in the first place if you're not... I mean, that thing's just ridiculous. And then another person, Brandon, you know, goes after is this, like, waitress who, like, gives him his birthday cake. And then he kills her. It's like, my god, you, you're killing the wrong people. I get you don't care about humans, but why don't you just kill the bullies first? I mean, that seems like the right thing to do. See, there's just nothing human about this character, and I see how people might think that's, you know, kind of an intentional thing, but for me, I think it's just weak writing, because if we don't really understand our main character, then that's really bad, because, I mean, I just, I feel detached from this story, because I'm like, what the fuck? And his methods of killing people don't make any sense. Homelander, on the other hand, is very different, because even though his kills are about as equally as gruesome as you know, the kid from Brightburns, his kills. The thing is, his kills actually have a method to them. His main method of killing people is pretty much using his laser eyes on people's heads, you know, and bodies, and yes, it's all gruesome. But the reason he does that is because he doesn't want to get blood on his suit, as we see in an early scene where he punches through somebody's chest, there's blood on his glove, like, oh, I hate that, dude. Because the thing is, Homelander has to have this image of being the, you know, Superman, pretty much, of this universe, being all good, perfect, you know, the... He's like the everyday American, but he's perfect. You know, he's better. He's like us, but he's better than us. You know, that kind of image. So there's an actual, like, story reason for the way he kills people. Where in Brightburn, it's a completely different thing. In Brightburn, the thing is, his kills are not even really Superman-ish. It's just, he's like a slasher villain. That's what they, they really played up the horror aspect of it and made it a slasher flick, where he's sneaking around. I'm like, you can just fly super fast and you, you're you invincible pretty much, right? You're pretty much invincible, so why are you taking your sweet ass time killing these people? Sneaking around gets you nowhere. What if you have to sneak for a friend? <laughs> you idiot. You're a sneaking bitch. Please, I'm sorry. <laughs> you. Sneaking around is never going to pay off, you fat f and again, it's not well established of, like, why he's doing this. You could say, oh, he's just sadistic. But, I mean, they don't really establish that too well. Because I don't understand anything about this character before this, you know, incident where he basically turns into, a, like, a super saiyan and is going to want to invade the world. Because he's pretty much a saiyan in this. That's his origin story is he is a saiyan. So I, I just didn't understand that because he gets his powers and he's, like, immediately a dick. And if that was what they're trying to do, like, oh, he had powers that made him a dick because, you know, you're a kid going through puberty, you might, you know, like, feel differently about things. Like, you might throw a tantrum and, you know, <clears throat> accidentally kill your dad. You know, it's all part of growing up. But they didn't make those things clear, it just seemed like he was just a dick. Again, nothing complex, very surface level on the take. They played up the horror too much, there's nothing human about him. And that's what I really disliked about the Brightburn take on this character. I think. It was just a very weird way to handle this. I mean, not weird, but just basic. But if I am to give some props to, you know, the Brightburn kid, you know, there are moments where he does show some, you know, like, level of smart thinking, like the plane thing, I guess. I guess he was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to crash that my house. It makes it look like, you know, a cover-up, kind of like. That's kind of like similar to Homelander's kind of thinking, I guess. You know, but the thing is, what confuses me about him is he leaves his, like, sign symbols, which is, like, his own symbol. He leaves these symbols and signs in every scene he's been in, but he doesn't want people to know that there's a super, you know, villain killing people. It's confusing as to what his motivation are, because, like, do you want people to know that you are doing this or not? Because he's clearly like, no, don't tell my parents I'm being here. You know, don't tell them this, and then he's trying to make it look like an accident, like a car crash, but then he leaves his these signs, he's like, why don't you just laser eye everyone you see? It's so confusing. So again, the writing in this is just terrible, and that's pretty much the main comparison in this video is, you just need your character to make some kind of sense, you need to establish motivations, you know? Like, Jesus Christ, how hard can it be? But yeah, I mean, there were some things I liked about Brightburn, but I won't get into that too much now since this isn't a review, but I will say Elizabeth Banks was pretty good, and I like the girl. And yeah, I suppose that's it for now, that's this video, so if you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like and share. And I pretty much make videos very infrequently, so I'll make a video whenever, I don't want to make too many promises, but yeah, if you enjoyed this, 
and you want to see when my next video is going to come out, it's better to subscribe so you'll be like, oh, I got a notification. So, you know, make sure you turn on that notification bell, all that. And yeah, I think, I think that covers about everything in this outro, so peace. Thank you.